A flyer reel is a pretty simple, basic piece of machinery, but there are a few things I want you to know about them. First of all, a fly reel really has two uses. First, the fly reel holds the fly line. If I didn't have a reel on the end of my rod, I'd have a big pile of line out in front of me and that wouldn't be much fun. Secondly, the reel fights the fish. Now, I may get some argument on that. You see a lot of old timers especially who simply put the line under their finger and they strip the fish in. They don't use the reel. A couple of ways I look at that. First of all, a reel has a drag system. Drag is a resistance that is applied to the spool when the fish is fighting or pulling line out. I trust this drag system a lot more than I trust my fingers. Secondly, I paid good money for the sucker, I'm going to use it. Most fly reels these days are made of good quality aluminum. Some of those are what we call cast and those are literally poured into a mold. Other types of reels are actually machined from a block of what they call aerospace grade bar stock aluminum. The cast reels definitely do a decent job, but they're not going to be as strong and durable. If you want to purchase a reel that's going to last you a lifetime and you can darn near run over it with your car, you look at a reel that is machined. All reels have a reel foot and this is where the reel attaches to the rod. Most reels have separate frame and spool components. These spools pop on and off fairly easily. I can buy additional spools for most reels if I want to have a sinking tip or a sinking line in addition to my floating line. On the outside of this spool I've got the handle which is obviously where I crank the reel. On this particular reel, I've got a counterbalance, which helps the reel rotate more smoothly. In the center, I've got the spool release button. I simply press the button in and pull the spool off. On the opposite side of the reel, I have the drag adjustment knob. I go from plus to minus, which is more drag or less drag, and I can simply rotate the knob as per my needs. There are several different types of drag systems on the market today. I want to run you through the basic differences. This first one I'm going to show you is called a spring and pawl drag system. When I tighten down on my drag adjustment knob, I'm putting pressure on these leaf springs here which in turn puts pressure on the little triangular pawl, which in turn puts pressure on my spool. A spring and pawl drag system offers fairly little resistance, although depending on what type of fish you're fishing for, it may be all you need. Now these components to this drag system can either be made out of Delrin or plastic, or they can be made out of stainless steel. The Dalrin and the plastic are usually the least expensive. In fact, you can buy one of these reels for really $30 on up and have a decent little reel. Some of your better ones can cost $200, $250, $300. So it depends on exactly what you're fishing for and what you're looking for in a reel. As I tighten down on the drag adjustment knob, I'm putting pressure on the leaf springs, which in turn put pressure on the triangular pawls, which in turn put pressure on the spindle on my spool. The second type of drag system I'm going to show you is definitely the most popular on the market today and probably the most economical. That's called a disc drag system. A disc drag offers you a heck of a lot of resistance for the money and it's a very durable, reliable system. When I tighten down on this drag adjustment knob, I'm basically compressing a disc in here which is attached to a main disc which the spool is attached to. Like I said, get a heck of a lot of resistance out of this, a really great value. I fish with these disc drag reels day in, day out. Now again, these components can either be plastic or they can be stainless steel. Again, the stainless steel is going to be the more expensive but the more reliable. A good disc drag reel can run you really anywhere from $60 to $350. When I rotate the drag adjustment knob, I tighten down on the main disc, 
which teeth are attached to the center disc, which is in turn attached to my spool, which slows it down. The next type of reel is by far the most reliable and the most durable on the market. That's called a cork drag system. This has a cork plate on the inside of it that when I tighten down on the drag adjustment knob, it essentially pulls the spool closer, tighter to that cork plate. That's where I get my resistance. This is by far the strongest drag system available on the market and the smoothest. When you're really going for big fish, fighting fish, or you just want a reel, that's a pleasure to use and it's going to last you a lifetime. A cork drag is the way to go. Most of these are quite expensive, usually range in the three to five, even six hundred dollar price ballpark. By rotating the drag adjustment knob, I'm bringing the spool tighter onto the cork plate, which gives me more resistance. I think that pretty much sums up fly reels. Pretty simple, really. You need to determine which type of reel best suits your needs and the fish you're going to be fishing for and your budget. You don't need to break the bank unless you really need to for the type of fishing you'll be doing or you just want to. Now let's take a look at what goes on the reel, the line system. If you like this video, hit subscribe. It helps out a lot. And check out these videos. We think you might like them too.